What's going on, everyone? Happy Sunday to everyone. Hopefully, everyone is doing well, staying safe, healthy. Hopefully, you're having a good weekend so far. Today, this is going to be the first of two videos that we do on the channel today. This is actually an unplanned special video, but when I was taking a look at air quality data this morning, and of course yesterday, you saw it in the pandemic update yesterday, air quality across the U.S. right now, it's not so great for millions of people and i thought you know what maybe we need to do a uh, special dedicated video just on air quality today because we're not doing a pandemic update today we're going to do a virus wastewater update that will be out a few hours after this video so let's take a look at some of the air quality issues going on around the country and if you're new to my channel hey welcome to my channel thanks for checking it out if you enjoy the content subscribe down below uh, first off, let's start off with the West Coast, I guess we should. I mean, there's, there's a lot of places that are having bad air quality. California is currently seeing bad air quality. That's because of wildfires. Let's take a look at the wildfire map. You can see here, there are multiple wildfires showing up on this map in California. And because of that, there's wildfire smoke. Now, some people have had to be evacuated. In fact, over 4,000 Residents were under mandatory evacuation orders in Southern California because of the wildfires, which are really bad at this time. And because of that, the smoke is going up into the air, and it's causing there to be bad air quality. Now, there's no air quality alerts in this area right now from the National Weather Service that I can show you, which, to be honest with you, is not making any sense to me. There are air quality alerts, however, in the east, in North Carolina. We'll get to that in just a moment. Let's go back to the air quality map. You can see here uh, some really high levels. Let's click on this site. Look at this. A level that's as high as 362. That's really bad. If you live in the area here in Central California where a level is as high as 362, this is near Santa Cruz, um, you're going to want to be masking if you're outside because that is really unhealthy to breathe in that air. It is bad for your health, bad for your lungs, and it even says here, health warning of emergency conditions. Everyone, not just asthma and allergy sufferers or COPD, everyone is more likely to be affected with 24 hours of exposures. So in other words, if the levels at this site stayed at these levels for 24 hours, that would be bad. It's equivalent to smoking multiple cigarettes. Not good. And you can see here, with 362, look at this uh, chart here. It says, 10-minute average, health warning of emergency. Everyone is more likely to be affected with 24-hour exposure. And it actually says here, whoa, it's actually showing now uh, 446 times. So, yeah, this is not good. Then we come east and take a look here at Fresno. Yes, Fresno is seeing some uh, levels that are above 100. That's not good either. And let's go up north. You can see here, not as bad up north. Yesterday was definitely, uh, Northern California was definitely worse yesterday. And slightly improved conditions as well across the Pacific Northwest. Remember, we've been talking about the jet stream during our pandemic updates. The smoke follows along the jet stream. Well, it did do that. So while it cleared in this area, it's still a little bit uh, unsettled air quality up in Canada. I believe there's still ongoing wildfires up there as well, though I haven't heard anything. Uh, it's a combination of both. you got the dry air, dry weather causing the wildfires, and then you have the jet stream bringing the smoke up. And look at this. So it's made its way into Alberta, and what, look at what's going on here. Yeah, it's come down the jet stream, and it has spread into the east. And this is not good. We have Chicago with poor air qualities. We have Detroit with poor air qualities. Columbus, Ohio, look at that. Levels over 100 there. Then you come into Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania, it's not perfect. Now, you're seeing some yellows here. You're seeing some oranges. A lot of this is elevated, the smoke uh, particles. And I can show that to you on one of the models. Here is the RAP, which is rapid. It's one of the weather models that uh, meteorologists use, but it can also show smoke. And you can see here, out in the southwest U.S., 
there are some pretty concerning air qualities or smoke levels that are being shown by wildfires that are currently in Mexico. You can see northern Mexico, northwest Mexico. But you can also see these plumes of smoke. You can see there's plumes of smoke that continue in the southeast as well. And this is concerning. Look at this right over here around New Orleans. Remember, just a few weeks ago, there was a really bad car crash where uh, Interstate 55, I believe it was, um, multiple people died in a car crash because there was fog, but there was also smoke in the air. And that smoke made it hard to see. The visibility dropped, it caused a chain reaction crash. Continuing on here with this, you can see the air quality, it's going to continue to be a problem in the east because we still have the smoke. Now, we're not talking any levels anywhere near as high what we saw in the summer. Like I said, once again, the majority of this is elevated, unlike in the summertime where the surface uh, smoke was so bad you saw smog in New York City, Philadelphia had problems with visibility. It was really bad along the I-95 corridor. This is not as bad, but again, let's go back to this map. It is not normal to see so many areas with bad air quality now that we're entering in November. Can it happen later in the winter? Sure, it can happen from time to time. But is it uh, likely to see it happen this often? No, no. We don't usually see it this much. There's another area of concern with wildfires, and that is in North Carolina. And they actually do have air quality alerts up. You can see here for portions of North Carolina. See this gray here? This gray is uh, air quality alerts because, take a look at this. Look at the wildfires that are going on in the mountains of North Carolina. Also up in the Virginia, the Smoky Mountains. There's wildfires ongoing there as well. Let's take a look at this thing from um, this new story from Fox Weather. North Carolina's Poplar Drive wildfires destroys homes as dry weather persists. So, yes, it's, it's a real issue. And it even says here, 1,300 acres have burned. And remember, that smoke is being released into the air. That smoke, as it's going up, it has to go somewhere, which is why you are seeing such poor air quality readings across the southeast. And here's wildfires. Oh, that's not the only wildfire. There's also wildfires in Georgia. Here's one right here, down in... Uh, West Central Georgia. And if we go back to the RAP model, look at this. The RAP model is projecting, I'll restart this again, it's projecting that there's going to be some bad smoke as we head into tonight and then again tomorrow evening. Look at that. Central Georgia. You can see it popping up here. So if you live in that area, I suspect you are definitely going to have some air quality concerns tomorrow as well. So that's something that you want to pay attention to. Let's now go over to one of the weather models. And what we want to pay attention here to is a couple things. We can take a look at the upper levels of the atmosphere. We can see where the jet stream is going to set up. And look at this. The jet stream, it's pretty much going to be a west to east flow through about Wednesday. But then this trough comes in. So as this trough tries to come in, it's not a real big trough. It's going to help push things out. Look at this. You can see there's this disturbance here. That's what these bright red colors are. That's a disturbance. So the air is going to push eastward. That's going to be a cold front. That should hopefully, by later this week, clear out any bad air quality in the east. The wild card, unfortunately, is if the wildfires continue in the west and they ride up along, they follow the air pattern, well then we could potentially see another round come in down the line. But you can see here, as we head to the long range, um, it does push east, and then as we get into the following week, like I said, look at this, a big ridge sets up, and look where the air quality, the airflow comes from. It comes from California once again. We know California, if we go back to the wildfire map, is seeing multiple wildfires, not only in Southern California, Northern California, there's several showing up here as well, and if you have this flow along the ridge, it would push up into the Great North Plains, the Midwest, and then come down into the east again. And of course, we still have to watch and see what happens with the wildfires in the Carolinas, because after all, I want to show you something else here. 
I don't want to turn this into a weather video, but this is important to see. We're not looking at a lot of rainfall in California. And yes, there could be some rainfall in the Carolinas, some rainfall in Georgia over where this uh, wildfire is. Will it be enough to put it out? Uncertain. If it does get put out, we wouldn't have to worry about these air quality concerns anymore. But the big one is, of course, California. We have to watch what happens there. All right, one last thing I wanted to show you. California rep. Barbara Lee introduces Bill to give workers smoke leave during wildfires. Yes, this is this is a real thing. A bill introduced in Congress this week by Representative Barbara Lee of Oakland would require employers to take steps to protect their employees from the bad air caused by wildfires. This includes providing up to 12 weeks of unpaid annual leave and sometimes paid leave so I guess you're not always going to get paid but it says during periods of heavy smoke to those whose health is seriously threatened so in other words if you're having uh, health problems and the smoke is of risk to you should this bill be passed you would be able to get leave you would be able to you know not go to work without getting fired because hey you have a medical condition and you cannot be exposed to the wildfire smoke so i thought this was rather interesting that they were going to do this already folks that does it for this uh update on the air quality of course we'll do our regular uh air quality checks during the pandemic updates this week i just thought i would show you the areas that are concerning and once again anywhere in these bad air qualities that you see particularly the oranges and the reds if you have to go outside I would consider masking just because, you know what, it is relatively dangerous in those areas and it can trigger your asthma symptoms or if you're COPD. And if you're in these areas of maroon and bright red, it doesn't matter whether you have a condition or not. It can definitely cause some health problems. And I'm certain that in these areas, there's probably increased number of 911 EMS calls. Alrighty, folks, I'll see you again later on today for the regularly scheduled wastewater update where we'll look at COVID, influenza, RSV, and yes, hepatitis, and maybe even an MPOX case or two. We may find a detection of that. I will see you all again later. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you want to see more content like this or anything else we do on the channel, subscribe down below. And thanks for watching. I will see you all again next time. Stay safe, everyone.